What's up, HasFit Tribe? It's your personal trainer, Coach Kozak. And I'm Claudia, and this is a full body stretching routine. This static stretching flow will improve your flexibility and mobility throughout your entire body. There's absolutely no equipment that's required, but you may want to grab a mat for some of the floor movements. If you're ready, let's get started. Let's get started on our feet with an upper body stretch. We're gonna start with a posterior shoulder stretch. So we're gonna take one arm, reach it across your body, keeping your shoulders nice and square so you don't wanna rotate as you do it, and try your best to pull that bicep to your chest. Now throughout today's routine, your flexibility may be greater or less than us, and we encourage you to make each and every move work for you. So that means you may be able to pull it further than us, or you may be about right here, and that's okay too. Just breathe and hold through this static stretch for three, two, one, zero. Excellent. All right, let's even it out and do the opposite side next. Pulling across. So it's again, it's a posterior shoulder stretch. This is a great one for your chest, shoulders, as well as your upper back. Also a good one to improve that posture. Nice, big, deep breaths as we hold. And you may find that one side is looser or tighter than the other, and that's totally normal. And let's hold this one for five, four, three, two, one, and zero. All right, go ahead and shake that one loose. Let's do another shoulder move next. This one specifically is gonna target your rotator cuffs. So I'm gonna take my right hand, I'm gonna place it at the small of my back, behind my back. And I'm actually gonna place my right hand on my hip. Now with that opposite side hand, we're gonna grab the elbow and gently pull it forward and then just hold. Now again, depending on your flexibility level, it's really gonna uh, determine where you place that hand at. And if you're not so flexible on your shoulders, go ahead and put it on your hip like Claudia is doing, or even in front and keep that hand on your stomach as you pull forward. And you make this workout and this, this routine work for you. Just holding gently, gentle pressure here for three, two, one, zero. All right, shake it loose and you guess it, opposite side next. Again, at the small of your back or on your hip and then pull forward on that elbow. Now in all of these static stretching moves that we're gonna do today, your goal is to get to about between 85 to 90% of what you're capable of. You wanna feel a good stretch, but at the same time, you don't wanna be feeling any significant pain. We're not trying to, to tear the cartilage or build up any scar tissue here. We're just trying to improve our flexibility. Again, nice, big, deep breaths. Holding this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, we're gonna need either a wall or a doorway for the next one. We're gonna move on to a bent arm wall stretch. So with that elbow at a 90 degree angle, go ahead and place it on a wall or a doorway. And then we're going to keep our body nice and close to that wall and we're gonna rotate away from that wall, feeling the stretch in our chest, our shoulders, a little bit in our back as well. Goodness gracious. All right, feeling this one today, Claudia? Mm-hmm. Must be your workout from yesterday kicking in. Yep. And again, depending where you are in your workout cycle and really just your life and environmental factors, some of these may be easy for you and some of them may be kicking your behind. And that's okay, totally normal. Feels nice though. Yes, it does. Again, holding it between 85 to 90% of what you're capable of. And let's hold this one for five, four, three, two, 
one, zero. All right, switching it up, opposite side now. Again, keeping that elbow bent at a 90 degree angle, also trying to have that elbow in line with your shoulder, so you don't want it low, but instead keeping it up. And let's rotate and turn away from that wall and hold. You got another great one to, to bring you, to, to loosen up your chest and bring those shoulders back to help you improve your posture. You know, we spend so much time between staring at our phones and sitting down at a desk and driving and just all those environmental factors that really hurt our posture. And so it's important that we do moves like this to, uh, to regain that natural upright posture. And this is something great to do at the office too. Definitely, throughout the day, get up, move around, get a couple of stretches in. Get the blood flowing. And let's hold this one for three, two, one, zero. All right, we're gonna stay over at that wall for the next one, but we're gonna move to the lower body and we're gonna do a standing dorsiflex. So go ahead and get nice and close to the wall. And we're gonna put your balls of your feet and your toes up on, on that wall. And then we're gonna apply pressure into the wall and bring that knee over your foot. You're gonna feel a stretch in the bottom of your foot as well as your calf. This is a great one to loosen up your calves, your Achilles tendon, as well as the bottom of your foot in that plantar fascial. You know, so many people have trouble with, especially runners and or people that, I know so many females that you know, wear high heels to yes. work, which is, <laughs> <laughs> which is Claudia's story. Her feet were so beat up from years in corporate America wearing and heels. And I'm still trying to gain my ankle mobility because it's horrible. So this is like also a great one for that ankle mobility. Good point. Thank you. So again, just bringing that knee over the foot and feeling that stretch. And the closer you get that heel to the wall, the more intense of a stretch it'll be for you. And let's switch sides in three, two, one, zero. Opposite side now. And again, driving that ball of the foot into the wall and then bringing your knee forward. And the closer that heel is, the harder it will be. And the further back you place your heel, the easier it will be. You decide which variation is right for you. Again, take a nice, big, deep breath here. And let's hold this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Excellent. Okay, next we're going to actually move on to a neck stretch. So specifically, this is for your levator scapulary, which is this major neck muscle here on the side. So let's take your right arm and place it and right hand and place it up on your trap, that elbow up. Now with your opposite side hand, your left hand, let's take the top and crown of your head and we're going to pull it down and to the left. So we're pulling down in this direction, keeping this hand up on your trap, and we're just gonna hold. Breathe. Not much of a range of motion before you actually begin to feel that big stretch in your neck. No, and, and then the purpose of this position is to really isolate that, that muscle and to really stretch that muscle in particular. And just hold. For five, four, three, two, one, zero. Excellent. Okay, switching it up. Opposite side now. I think Claudia's really feeling this one today. Yeah. Uh, I mean, <laughs> all right, opposite side much. shoulder. And pull your head down and across. And you can kind of play with the, what the right angle is for you. Again, you're really trying to target this levator scapulae here on the side. And then, again, totally common for one side to be tighter than the other. I don't know, for me, this side's definitely tighter. Another great one to do if you spend a lot of time at a desk or driving or... Staring at your phone. Any behavior that <laughs> encourages a forward head tilt. This is a great one to counteract. For three, two, one, zero. Okay, oh. come on back up. That was a good one. Shake it loose. All right, moving into a quadricep stretch, moving into the lower body, we're gonna do a standing quad stretch. So you can either do this one from a freestanding position, or you can do this one with a wall or a chair for support. So I'll use the wall for support. We're gonna pull back, 
Bring that heel to your glutes the best that you can, keeping good balance. Little soft bend in that opposite side knee. We want to try to keep that knee in close to our side. A lot of times you have a tendency to bring it out here. To flare it out. But if you do, it uh, really does you, does you a disservice and doesn't allow you to target that quadriceps. So try to keep it nice and close into your side on this one. If you're doing the freestanding one, just fix your eyes on something, focus. When that opposite really side you. arm up helps too. That's right. It does help with your balance too. So again, make it work for you. And we're just holding for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Lost it. That's all right. And again, this doubles right of the, the balance move too, right? <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. A little extra credit. Okay. Switching to the opposite side now. Again, pulling back. And I can see my, my left side is a little tighter than my right. Yep. Mine too. And again, very common. Pulling back to 85, 90% of what you can. You can feel that good stretch, but don't go too crazy. Mm-mm. Trying your best to get that heel back to your glute. You may be way more flexible than us or not quite as flexible as we are, and that's all right. Again, just make this routine your own. And let's hold this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right. Shake them loose again. Moving on to a hamstring stretch. So we're gonna move into a straight leg, one leg hamstring stretch. Just put one leg out on that heel. Slight bend in that opposite side knee, but this leg stays straight. Now we're gonna use our hips as a hinge. Bring those hips bending over from the hips and we feel that stretch in our hamstring. Now it doesn't take a lot of range of motion on this one. Keep your shoulders square, head in line with your spine. This one's really going to isolate the back of that lead leg. And again, not trying to like bend over and turn it into a squat, but instead using those hips as a hinge and then hold. Again, breathing through it. And if you want a little extra calf stretch on this one, you can do so by pulling back on the toes or you can relax the toes and really just make it a hamstring stretch. I'll let you decide. And let's hold this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Excellent. Right into that next side here. No wasting time. We got places to go, people to see. Come on. Weight back in the hips, bend over at a hinge. Don't mind my corny jokes throughout. They'll be scattered. There's a reason why I'm not a comedian. All right. Bending over at the hips. Shoulders are square. Weight back in those hips. Really feeling that hamstring stretch. And again, try your best to keep your sh head in line with your spine and your shoulders back so you're not hunched over. But instead, keeping everything else nice and straight. And let's hold this one for five, four, three, two, one. Zero back up. All right, let's go one last move on our feet. We're going to do a standing IT band stretch. So your IT band is also known as your iliotibial band runs from here down to your knee. It often gets tight if you're doing dynamic exercises, running, running, plyometrics. So we're going to step behind with our right leg. And now with our right arm, we're going to reach up and over driving that right hip to our right side, and we're gonna feel that stretch all down our side, our obliques, and right in through that iliotibial band. Keep in good posture while you do so. Shoulders are back, so you're not bending over forward, but only bending over to the side. And really focus on taking that right hip and- Popping it out. Popping it out, that's it. You got it. Again, breathing and holding. And let's do this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Relax. And let's move right into that opposite side. Try not to fall over. <laughs> okay, let's take our left foot, step behind. And the bigger of a step you take, the more of a stretch you're gonna feel. Again, you decide what's right and appropriate for you. This isn't something I stretch out often. Not often enough. Super. Feeling it tight. <laughs> Super tight. 
You can tell this is real right there with you, Has Fit Drive, stretching with you. Driving that hip to the left this time. Reaching over. Excellent. And let's hold this one. Four, five. Four, three, two, one, zero. And relax. Uh, all right, let's go ahead and move to the floor for the next set. We're gonna uh, stretch out our groin for the next one. We're using mats, depending on the surface you're working out on, you may want a mat just for comfort for your knees for this one. So we're gonna open up our legs with our feet together. You can go ahead and kind of walk your hands out. And now we're gonna stretch your groin by dropping your hips to the floor. Now again, depending on your flexibility level, you may have your legs much wider than us or not quite as wide. Really encourage you to make this one your own, but to feel that stretch, drop those hips. So you take those hips and bring them down and then you're just gonna hold. If you need more of a stretch, you can come down to your forearms and then you can open your legs up a little more and drop those hips even further. You decide which variation is right for you. I think I'll stay here. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. We all have our strengths and our weaknesses. Just not avoiding those weaknesses, but working on them. This is like a reverse butterfly almost. Yep, yep. Very similar to the butterfly Which move. Which I've never been good at, so. Yeah, but this one uses your body weight for Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so it really uh, intensifies the move. Holding this one not much longer. Let's just hold this one for five. Four, three, two, one, zero. Come on up slowly, walk those hands back. And we're gonna move into a hip flexor stretch. So those hip flexors, again, another one that can really affect your posture as they bring you forward. We're gonna do a kneeling hip flexor stretch. So let's come up onto one knee, hands on our hips, got good 90 degree angles all around. So the setup is the most important part. First thing we're gonna do is contract and flex our abs. Next, we're gonna contract and flex our glutes. Now, with that done, now we can gently lean forward. And it's not gonna take much range of motion to come forward and really feel that stretch along our hip flexors and quads. As long as you're keeping your abs tight and your glutes tight, you're really only gonna get anywhere between a half an inch to two inches of range of motion on this one before everything gets tight. Hold, keep those abs tight, glutes tight, as you come forward. Just squeeze. That's it, squeeze those glutes, squeeze those abs, and gently come forward. And you'll feel that, that hip flexor isolated. Let's hold this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Excellent, one of my all time favorite moves there. I feel like I, I, feel like I always need that one. Yes. Okay, come on back up, opposite side now. Again, abs are tight, glutes are tight, and then gently come forward. You know, oftentimes you'll see people in a similar setup doing this move, and they'll come all the way forward to stretch that hip flexor, but if you're flexing those abs and you're flexing your glutes, not necessary. This will, it's much more effective in this manner. Nice, big, relaxed, deep breaths. And again, don't go too crazy on this one. Doesn't take much range of motion. Let's hold it for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Excellent. All right, next, let's stretch out a, a body part that's often overlooked, our wrists and hands. We're gonna move into a wrist extension. So let's start with our fingers pointed back at us and our palms down from our knees. Now you want to be very gentle with these wrist stretches until you get comfortable with them. Now for an easier stretch, you can bring those hands closer to you. For a harder stretch, a little further away. Now we're gently going to rock back and hold, trying our best to keep our hands flat on the ground. Now again, depending on your flexibility level, your stretch may look more like this and that's okay. I want you to apply very gentle pressure with this one until you get comfortable with this. Does not take much. 
Again, our hands and wrists between texting on our phones and our keyboards and driving and everything else we're doing, taking a lot of abuse throughout the day. And it's important that we give them that recovery time as well. And you usually only feel it when you're doing push-ups or planks or something on the ground. Yeah, when you're usually when you're feeling that pain, it, that's you know usually a sign that everything else you're doing through the day is what's really beating them up. And let's hold this one for three, two. One, zero. Okay, next we're gonna move into a wrist flexion. So it's the antagonistic move. Again, we're gonna be careful with this one. We have our fingers pointed uh, at us. We're gonna be on the top of our palms. Now gently apply pressure. Now I'm gonna go all the way until my palms are flat on the ground, but you might just be like you know this with only your fingers on the ground applying gentle pressure. Again, make this work for you. And if you're feeling good and you're, and you're able to apply that pressure with your palms, uh, I'm sorry, the top of your hands on the ground, then you can do so and gently rock back. Again, you decide which level is right for you on this stretch. And again, so key to only go to 85, 90% of what you're capable of and ease into it. Mm-hmm. Good advice. Nice, big, deep breaths, and just hold. Not much left on this one. Let's go for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Come on up nice and slow. Ah, feels good. All right, we're gonna move to our backs for the next one. And we're gonna do a floor angel. So this one's gonna be all about our setup. So let's start with our, our head flat on the ground and try your best to get your chin tucked in and so you have your whole head on the ground not just like this but instead you're actually your lower part of your skull also on the ground make a double chin like it, that's it make a really nice attractive double chin or <laughs> in my case a triple chin okay next we're going to bring your lower back flat on the ground as well you don't want a big over a big arch so now that you have this set up let's bring our arms and relax rest our arms on the ground and now let's pull those elbows slowly into our sides again trying your best to keep your back flat on the ground you're gonna feel pressure and spots you never knew existed now let's reach up overhead again trying your best to keep your back flat on the ground keep that chin tucked reaching as far as you can and slowly reverse direction pull those elbows down this one's Loosening up your rotator cuffs, your chest, your shoulders, your upper back, and reach back up overhead. Big reach, big full range of motion. Test that range of motion. Try and extend those arms. And now let's pull back down one more time, pulling down from the elbows. Like somebody's got a string attached to those elbows and they're pulling down, trying to keep your arms flat on the ground the best you can. Now your variation may look completely different than ours. Maybe you only have your hands up, maybe your elbows are down, but try your best to get here. And you'll, every time you do this stretch, you'll get a little bit better. Now let's reach up one last time. Big reach. It's a great one for overall shoulder mobility. Reach, reach, reach and relax excellent okay let's go ahead and stay in this lying position we're gonna move into a lying arm pullover so let's start with our hands together and arms straight up overhead now again trying our best to keep that lower back back flat on the ground and our head in that tuck uh, chin tuck position let's let those arms pull up overhead and then reverse direction Bring the arms straight up perpendicular to the ground. And let the hands fall back, come as far back as you can, whether that's hands all the way to the ground or not quite so much. That's all right, do the best you can. Back and forth in a nice, slow and controlled pace. Again, keeping that chin tucked and that lower back glued to the ground the best you can. Another excellent overall shoulder mobility drill to really help you regain that posture. Nice full range of motion and you'll see as you're going through this, 
should start to improve your range of motion a little bit from one rep into the next. Mm -hmm. Once I got past all the pops, <laughs> it's gotten a lot better. How you get past those initial pops? No big deal. <laughs> All right, let's go just a couple more times. And five, four, three, two, one. All right, let's go one last one, pull them back. And now we're just gonna hold. Just hold here with those arms overhead, keeping your biceps by your ears the best that you can. Arms are straight, hands are together, chin is tucked. Lower back is flat on the ground. I know that's a lot to ask. I'm right there with you. Trust me. And just breathe for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Excellent. Good stretch. All right, now let's move on to our lower body and our lower back specifically. We're gonna do a lying knee to chest stretch. So let's get both knees up and grab onto those knees and pull them to your chest. Now we're trying our best to keep that small of your back flat on the ground. So we're not rolling up, but instead keeping that tailbone on the ground as you pull your knees to your chest. And you can go ahead and bring your, your head to the, uh, your head up off the ground as you pull those knees to your chest. And again, your variation might look like this, and that's all right. You do the best that you can. Just really important to try to keep that tailbone glued to the ground and don't roll up. Otherwise, you won't be isolating the lower back. And let's just hold this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Excellent. All right, for the next one, let's go ahead and let those arms relax out to your sides, and we're gonna bring our knees to a 90 degree angle. Now we're gonna do a lying knee twist. So we're gonna twist to your right side while keeping your upper back flat and glued to the ground. And then on this one, you may only be able to get your knees to 30 or 45 degree angle, or you may be able to twist all the way. But I don't want you to relax your knees on the ground, and we're just gonna do a static hold. It's a great one for your lower back. Again, you get to the point where you feel comfortable. You feel a good stretch, but you don't necessarily feel a big strain. Keeping those knees bent at a 90 degree angle and keeping your upper back and shoulders flat on the ground. Don't allow your whole body to roll. And let's hold this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, rotating opposite direction now. Again, same move, nice and controlled. And again, if you're just at a 30 degree angle before you, you start to feel uh, that good stretch, and that's all right, make it work for you. But very important to keep that upper back flat on the ground. Don't just roll into it, because that defeats the whole purpose. So I can't go as low on my left side as I can on my right side. I'm totally common. That's why we're here working on it. Working on it together. Let's hold for five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, let's go ahead and let that, your head relax down on the ground. Feet are flat, on, both feet are flat on the ground. We're gonna do a piriformis stretch next. That's we're gonna stretch out your piriformis, which is right up in here, often causes that sciatic nerve pain. Also gonna work your IT band. So let's take your right foot, and put it up on your left knee. Now let's grab two hands on that right knee. We're gonna pull that right knee to your left shoulder. So you're pulling it across your body. And we're feeling a stretch down through your IT band, through your hip, and maybe even into that piriformis. That's a great one if you suffer from any sciatic nerve pain or IT pain. And we're just gonna hold. Again, pulling across your body. So not just to the left, not just forward, but to that opposite side shoulder. And we're just holding. For five, four, three, two, one, zero. And relax. All right, you know the drill by now. Let's move into that opposite side. 
Again, two hands on that left knee. Let's pull it towards our right shoulder. Making sure to take some nice, big, deep breaths in this one. Goodness. Keeping that left foot on your knee. You feeling this one, Claudia? Mm-hmm. If you have any soreness from any previous workouts. <laughs> <laughs> Claudia's glutes this, were super sore before today's this routine. This will expose them. <laughs> I'm guessing, guessing your glutes are feeling good on this the, one, Claudia? They are. All right. Well, must be working. Must be. Goodness, yeah. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, that feeling is how we know it's working. Let's hold this one for five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, come on up nice and slowly. We're going to move into a little yoga inspired stretch next. Turning on over into a prone position. We're going to move into a downward dog to upward facing dog to child's pose flow. Got that? Did you get all that? Okay, good. <laughs> all right, so uh, from on your hands and knees, let's pop up onto your feet into a downward dog position. We're going to pull our shoulders back, bring those hips back, and we're ideally bringing those heels to the ground. Now, your variation may look much uh, better than ours, or you may be more like this. That's okay. You make this work for you. Ideally, you're walking those feet up and feeling that stretch in your posture, your chain, your calves, hamstrings, glutes, lower back as you drive those hips backwards. All right, now we're going to dive down into an upward facing dog. Bring those hips to the floor, chin up, chest up. Now, on this one, you can either keep and you stay on the balls of your feet or you can go ahead and come down if you feel more comfortable doing so. You decided which variation is right for you. Head is up, shoulders are back. All right, now let's go ahead and come down onto those knees. Sit back, we're going into a child's pose. Head comes down, shoulders are relaxed, straight up overhead. We're sitting down onto our own calves, our own feet. And just keep pulling back, making sure to breathe. Do not hold your breath. All right, let's go through this sequence one more time. Let's come on up, raising up into a downward dog position, walking forward the best you can, driving those hips back like somebody's behind you, pulling your, your glutes backwards. And as you'll see, Claudia is going, she's walking out. Right to left, you can give that a try too. Helps you isolate each individual side. A little move I picked up from our friend Sean Vig. That's right, I like it as well. Pulling back. All right, now let's go ahead and dive down in that upward facing dog. Head comes up. If you feel more comfortable, go ahead and do this one from your knees. You can also squeeze your glutes in this position. I like it. Helps protect your lower back. Yeah, that's a good tip. So says our friend Sean V. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of his videos, as you can see. <laughs> Those are good tips. <laughs> All right. And lastly, let's go ahead and come down to our knees. Pull those hips back. And moving into a child's pose. Oh, yeah. This feels nice. Let's just go ahead and sit here and relax. Nice, big, deep breaths. This is our last move of the day. You made it. Just... Take a second here to be proud of what you've achieved so far today. You understand that recovery work and flexibility work are important for you to get to where you want to go and you're here investing the time. And five, four, three, two, one, zero. Excellent. Come on up nice and slowly. I'm feeling looser already. Me too. Excellent work, Claudia. Nice work, coach. Nice work to you out there, HasFit Tribe. Thank you for joining us today. If you enjoyed this workout today, we'd ask that you please help support our mission of keeping these great workouts free by downloading our app. It's available for both iOS and Android. You can pick up a shirt from our store, or you can also check out my book, Stay Fit for Life.
And if you enjoyed this stretching routine with us today, we ask that you give it a big thumbs up and hit that red subscribe button so that you never miss another brand new workout from HasFit. Thank you so much for working out with us today. I'm Coach Kozak. And I'm Claudia. And we will see you at your next workout.